I am strong. I am fearless. I am courageous. I am beautiful. I can do all things. I am created to be me. I am a woman. And I am the funky. Emma, so I heard you did a video called Lovely Day. Did you have fun doing it? You loved it? Oh my gosh. Real? I know, I know. I had fun too. I had so much fun. But did remember when I fell? Do you remember when I fell? You did, I know. That was so crazy, right? I know, you tried to save me. Did you see the birds? Wasn't that fun? <laughs> I know, right? I know, that was so much fun. So, usually when we do interviews, we don't feed people, but however, you're just the little piggy that you are. So, let's, re let's rejoice and sing Lovely Day, shall we? You wanna sing Lovely Day? Okay, good girl, let's sing Lovely Day. Let's do it together. It's gonna be a lovely day. Hi, Emma. No worries, no worries. Remember, no it's gonna be a lovely day. Be a lovely day. I see clearly now that the rain is gone. It's gone. So lovely. Remember that, Emma? Lovely, lovely, It's gonna be a lovely day. Life is all about special moments, joy, uplifting our youth keeping active, and having conversations with our friends, even lusting over our shoes, and dancing when no one is watching. Hi, welcome to Sheila E. TV. Are you having an incredible day today? Because I am. I'm so excited about today's show. This powerful and beautiful woman broke down barriers. On June 30th, 2015, Copeland became the first African-American woman to be promoted to principal dancer in the American Ballet Theater's 75th year history. She has written two autobiographical books and narrated a documentary about her career challenges, A Ballerina's Tale. In 2015, she was named one of the 100 most influential people in the world by Time Magazine, appearing on its cover. She just so happened to dance with the genius himself, Prince. Please welcome my beautiful sister, Misty Copeland. <laughs> Hi, Mama. <laughs> you look fabulous. You look fabulous. Uh, you're at home, I can tell you're at home. I'm at home. I'm in New York City. It's so busy. I told you about this project that I'm that I'm working on in Oakland. Yes. Where you your hometown. Bay Area. Hey. <laughs> We're hoping to film it. It's a short film that I'll be starring in um, in June. So I'm trying to get my body back in shape. Otherwise, everything I'm doing is creative without using my body. So uh, we're calling it flower for now. I don't know what it's going to translate into, but the project in Oakland, um, it was really important for me to utilize the talent from the Bay area. Uh, cause there is so much in so many areas, you know, whether it's the director Colin Tilly, uh, who's from uh, Marcus Gardley, who is our writer for like, script writing, he's from the Bay Area. It's just, yeah, we're making sure that we really uh, do the Bay justice. I know how important it is to the community. So uh, yeah. we utilize all of the talent there and especially the youth right now um, in any way that we can on this film. Good. Excellent. Yay. I'm so excited. You are one of many of my friends and sisters that I love so much. And I love being a part of someone's family that continues to encourage other people constantly. You're always so uplifting and it's just, you're, you're a, a ray of sunshine every, every single time I see you and talk to you. But I really, I love what you're doing. I love what you continue to do and what, and who, how you represent, you know, it's just so encouraging and, and enlightening. It really is. No, I, I, I mean, I always say this and it's like, 
I think that it says so much about the person with the people they're surrounded by, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm so grateful that you've always been so supportive and like a big sister to me. And it's, it's, it's so vital. And, and I understand to be able to be that person for, you know, the next generation. I have so many little mentees and it's just like, you've got to keep the cycle going, got to make the next generation better than us. And like, I feel like that's why we're here. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, Prince was the same way, you know, was, was constantly looking at the, at the next generation to nurture. And, and I, and I feel like we attract we attract the same type of people as us, and it's it's really beautiful. It is, yeah. It's uh, it's so encouraging to, like you say, the, the little mentees. Now I'm I'm Auntie Sheila to everyone who's ten years younger than me. So all the young kids, they're I mean, all these young amazing musicians, they're I, I'm just so blown away. Looking, you know, seeing your social media and seeing like, you know, the next generation and who, you know, that you're sharing these musicians, like it's so beautiful to like educate other people too. It's so important. It is so important. And, and it's, again, for me, I tell all my young ne nieces and nephews now, I say, you are so inspiring to me. Like you make me want to get up and play now. And I need that, you know, because I'm like, you're playing better than I've ever played in my whole life, and you're only 12. You suck. I know. I just <laughs> They're just amazing. They're so incredible. I love it. I love it. So when you discussed earlier your project, is there something that you can share with us or not share? Do we have to wait? That I can share some stuff. I mean, it's it's what's... It's grown into something that I didn't imagine it was going to be. The idea started out um, with Nelson George, who directed my documentary, A Ballerina's Tale. And, yes, uh, and it's amazing. Thank you. It has such an incredible long history with music, uh, Nelson does. And when we met, like he was, him and Spike Lee at the same time were coming at me, like, you need to be acting. And I'm like, no, I don't. I have so much to do in my field. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> That's not where I need to be right now. I mean, right. I, I was not a principal dancer yet. And I knew that, like, you know, we have to put all our focus into our craft before we can go off and, like, venture out and do sure, all Sure, yeah. So this idea, like, Nelson kept kind of nudging me to do a movie with him. So we finally came to uh, a balance and um, decided to do a silent film, which would be like a dance film. Mm -hmm. and and it kind of evolved. Nelson originally wrote the concept and the mm. and being that one of the characters in the in the script was homeless, it really hit home with me. Um, I mean, I grew up houseless for almost my entire childhood, you know, living in motels or living in other people's houses that I didn't even know, like mm. we have five siblings, like sleeping on people's couches. So uh, you know, the story developing and then, you know, the, the homelessness crisis on the West Coast in California and more particularly in the Bay Area and in Oakland and San Francisco, um, we decided to turn this into an art activism piece, mm -hmm. something that we, you know, can hopefully, hopefully bring awareness to right. be, be more than just a film. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. You know, when I think about ballets, it's silent, it's silent story. And it's, it using, and it's using the moods of, of the composing and the music and all of that to right. tell it. And, you know, I, I, I love old Hollywood. And so I would love to get back to that. You know, I have, I have yeah. a lot of projects in the works. I've got um, a production company. So that's what we're producing this through. I know it's exciting. I've got some stuff that, you know, be able to bring this form of art to a broader audience, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that will maybe awaken people's awareness and mm -hmm. appetite to be in the theater and 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 understand what ballet is, which is silent storytelling. That's true. It's true. I think it's so important, and it's about time. <laughs> we need this. Yeah. And imagery is so powerful and so important to see that representation. Like, I think about Kamala, you know, and, and, and being vice president, and... and I think the first thing people think of is like how it's going to affect little girls, how it's going to mm -hmm. affect. But I'm like, it's going to affect this next generation of little boys, like to see how they how 
they um, how they see women and how they view women and what their their uh, the possibilities are for them. And I think that's going to have a completely different dynamic for like the, this generation of young boys, which is so empowering. It really is. It, it's uh, like you say, imagery is so important. And to be able to see someone like you on the screen is just like, wow, there is there are other people like us, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's exciting. It is. I mean, as tough as 2020 was, I think that there's always a silver lining and, and there's always something beautiful that comes out of such yeah. despair and like heartache. And, um, and you know, I, I often think about, you know, of, of course, in the ballet community, that I feel like this is the first time in my 20 year professional career having a voice and speaking about the lack of diversity and racism in classical ballet and with the murder of George Floyd. Um, this is the first time that I've seen a shift in the way people are listening to me and the conversation wow. being had internally. Like I've been talking about this stuff for forever. Sure. This is the first time, like I'm getting calls from, you know, uh, big like classical elite companies in other countries that are like, we want to know your we want to know what's happening what's your perspective and that's never really been the case it's kind of like we're just going to get by like oh it's cute to like have a diversity initiative like it looks good for us right. but we're not putting in the work um you know and then i and then i think about like what prince would be doing in this time and and i think it's i i think it's our responsibility to kind of to to take that the torch and and do what we can to make um, the most from what our talents are and what our reach is and, and our platforms are. And, and it's just, it's been a long, a long year, but I feel like there's a lot that has come out of it that's been positive. Well, that is a blessing that now, and you say you're 20 years professionally, that people are listening. And I think that that was something that I think awakened our not just our country, but the world mm -hmm. and the things that were hidden that no one talked about. And all of a sudden, when the world, the, not just our country, but the world shut down, it opened up everyone's eyes. And then everyone was saying, it's like, this has been going on forever, you know, forever. Mm -hmm. and now people are listening. What has your experience been like? Have you had like different conversations with people? Like, has that shifted and changed at all? Oh, absolutely. Because I'm, much older, uh, and the up and coming young people, um, they want to know more about what I've gone through in a sense. So they're asking questions, which I think is really good and asking, you know, what's, you know, how did you get through this and who did you play with? And, and I've been talking to a couple of other younger people that were, um, wanting to quit. And I told them, don't give up, you know, um, because there's times when I've almost felt like I wanted to stop but, you know, if we just reach one person every yeah. single day, we look at it as that. Just one person, if you reach that one person, that one person could change the world. That one person that you reach because you were here doing what you love to do. So don't give up, you know. Yeah. That's exactly how I look at it, too. I, I think that's how you have to, you know, love what you do and do it for the right reasons and do it to make the world better, to make people better. Right. And the best will come. And the best will come, I know. And that's why I love what you're doing, all these projects and all these things. And, I, I, yeah, I mean, it's just like when you say, oh, Misty Copeland, absolutely, because she's a household name and everyone knows what she's doing because now she has been the one to bring the face, you know, to mainstream. And I think that, that it's your time. It really is. It's been your time. <laughs> I just feel so... I feel so fortunate every day and I just have to yeah. remind myself that. And and you know, it's for me it's really about what can I do to make make it make it easier, make it a better place for the next generation. And that's yeah. what we're here for. That's what we're here for. Exactly. Excellent. Well, you know I'm always here for you, whatever you need. I know, and you are, always are, and I love you. Uh, I love you too. All right, sis. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.
I'd like to thank my special guest, Miss Misty Copeland. Oh, thank you so much for being on the show. You are such an angel. And my other special guest today, Miss Emma Escobedo. I like the little baby. Give me a kiss. Mm. Oh. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> thank you. We hope that you have an amazing day, huh? Oh, look at, oh, that's so cute. I can't stand it. What are you doing? You want to play? Oh, say goodbye to everybody. Say bye. Say bye. <laughs> bye, everybody. We'll see you next week. Woo! I made up my mind. I'm living today. I'm worried about what people might say. I thought about what life would be if I would have stayed stagnated, complacent, like a ship without a sail. I belong. It's gonna be a lovely day. No worries, no worries. It's gonna be a lovely day. be a lovely day. I see clearly now that the rain is gone. It's gone. Sun on my skin. It's a beautiful day. Flowers are blooming. Things are going my way. Even if the seasons change, I still remain. See clear.